okay, so in this example we're being asked if x is greater than zero, what is one possible solution to the equation below? So what we're going to do first is we're simply just going to simplify the left side of this equation. And I'm going to do that by distributing this x inside the parentheses to each of my terms. Now when I do that, I'm going to get the following. I'm going to get x cubed plus 6x squared and then minus x. And this will be equal to 30. Okay. Now the next step that I want to do is I want to move this 30 over to the left side because I want to try and factor this polynomial. Because if I can factor this polynomial, I can solve for possible solutions of this equation by solving for x. Okay, so my goal here is to try to factor this polynomial. Now in order to do that, I need to move this 30 over to the left side, and I'm going to do that by subtracting 30. So now I have x cubed plus 6x squared minus x minus 30. This is all equal to 0. Now notice here that we are not dealing with a quadratic, so we can't do something like the quadratic formula, right? We can't use the AC method for factoring, right? It's a little bit more involved. All right, so what we want to do here is we want to fall back on the rational root theorem. Now, we have talked about the rational root theorem in the past, okay? So again, that's going to be P over Q, okay, where P is your constant and Q is your leading coefficient. And what we're going to do is we're going to write out factors for our constant and factors of our leading coefficient. And the result is going to give us possible rational roots of this polynomial. All right. So let's go ahead and set this up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take what we have here and I'm just going to rewrite it above so we have it to refer back to. So we have the following. We have x to the third plus 6 x squared minus x minus 30. This is all equal to zero. And I'm just going to erase this side here. So we're done with this. Okay. And let's go ahead and write out some factors for our constant here. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. So looking at negative 30, well, we can have plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and you don't have to write them all out, but you want to write it out, right, a good amount. That way you can test some possible rational roots. Okay, what else could we have? Plus or minus 5. Okay, and we'll just stop there for now, okay? And we know that we can keep going, but we'll stop there for now. And then looking at our leading coefficient, well, that's just going to be 1, so it's plus or minus 1. Plus or minus 1. So doing this, we can have the following possible rational roots. Again, all you're going to do is simply just do division here. You can do plus or minus 1 divided by plus or minus 1. Plus or minus 2 divided by plus or minus 1. So let's write those out. So we're going to have plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 5. Okay? If we need more, we can always go back and get more. All right, but we'll start with that for now. Now, what this tells us is these are possible rational roots of our polynomial. Now, we're going to test to see if they are, in fact, rational roots of our polynomial by using synthetic division. Okay? So, what we're going to do is we're going to look at our polynomial, and we're going to write out our coefficients. Okay, so remember when you do synthetic division, if you skip a term, you have to put in a zero for that coefficient. However, in this case, notice I go from x to the third, x to the second, x, and then my constant. I do not skip any terms, so I don't have to worry about that. So let's go ahead and just write out our coefficients. We're going to have a 1, we'll have a 6, we'll have a negative 1, and we'll have a negative 30. Now, if you do synthetic division and your remainder is 0, that tells you that the root that you tested is, in fact, a root of that polynomial. Right? So let's go ahead and test this out. Let's just pick 1. In this case, we'll just go ahead and pick positive 2. See what works out here. So positive 2. All right. <clears throat> and then let's see what we get. We're going to break
bring down the one. So two times one is two. Okay, and we're gonna get six plus two, that's eight. Two times eight is 16. Okay, this is gonna give us 15. Two times 15 is 30. So look what happens here. Our remainder is going to be zero. So this tells us that yes, two is going to be a zero of this polynomial. All right, now notice here, you could actually stop right here. Okay, because it says if x is greater than zero, what is one possible solution to the equation below? Well, two would be a solution to that equation, all right? But let's just go ahead and find all of the zeros here so we can see the whole thing written out. So at this point, what you want to do, we know that we just brought this down to a quadratic because when we do synthetic division, okay, we naturally go down a degree, right? So this is now x squared, this is x, and this is our constant. So rewriting it, we have x squared, plus 8x plus 15, okay? And what we can do at this point is, well, we can try to factor this, right? We can try to factor it using the AC method. So, using the AC method, A times C, that's one times 15, that's gonna give us 15. Now we need two numbers that when we multiply are gonna give us 15, but add up to eight. Well, that's gonna be five and three. Okay, and notice that A is equal to 1 here, so we don't have to do factoring by grouping. We can put this right into factored form, so we have the following. We're going to have X plus 5, then X plus 3, okay? So we just factored what we have here. Now, remember, 2 was a 0 of this polynomial, so think about where this came from. This really says X equals 2. So putting it in its factored form, it's going to be x minus 2 equal to 0. So we can go ahead and add that onto the end here, right? And that will be the complete factorization of our polynomial. So I'm going to add that onto the end, x minus 2 equal to 0. And what we just did is we just factored our whole polynomial right here. And at this point, you would take each one of your factors, right? Here's a factor, here's a factor, and here's a factor. Set them equal to zero and solve. So for example, you'd have x minus two equal to zero. x plus three equal to zero. x plus five equal to zero. So when you solve these, right, what do we get? Well, we get x equals two, x equals negative three, x equals negative 5, okay? So if we look again at our question, it says if x is greater than 0, so x has to be greater than 0, well, you already know that these two possible solutions are already out, right? So your solution in this case is going to be x equals 2, right? What we just did, we went a step further so we could see the other possible solutions, which could be negative 3, negative 5. Again, but based on the problem, it has to be greater than 0, so... 2 is going to be the only solution that satisfies right, our inequality here. Okay, and that is it.